<sighs> so we're back. Nintendo Switch 2 leaks and rumors. Now, I want to get into this before I am not a Nintendo fan. I am not a fanboy. I am not a Sony pony. I am not an Xbox. But I do own all the consoles. I have a Steam Deck, PS5, Series X. I have everything. So I get the both of both of all worlds i get to play all games all exclusives i do have a right to you know give my opinion and if you don't like the opinion then i mean hey thanks for tuning in all right i also don't like to get into the rumors and leaks but here am i doing it because it is a hot topic and i just want to give my opinion on it that's all and i'm just going by the facts of uh art- articles <laughs> that's on um you know from actual game companies so this is not stuff i'm making up just because I see a lot of people in my last video, which is doing pretty well. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All right. Uh, basically, from what I'm hearing and from what I'm reading, there's rumors that the new Switch is being showed off to developers at Gamescom. is a closed-door situation. Basically, that just means it's not for the public. Developers, maybe a few journalists, are able to see the next console and, you know, work in. And I didn't cover it the other day because I heard stuff saying that they were showing off Breath of the Wild running at 60 frames per second and um, in 1080p in handheld mode. And uh, rumors of it being um, 4K30 when it's docked. Is this something I could believe? Yes, I could believe that. Just for the simple fact. You know, they could probably put some hardware, some chip inside that turns it from a USB-C adapter. Because <laughs> that's basically what the dock is. is an adapter that's just outputting an HDMI signal. And uh, I could see it having some hardware inside. That I could see. 1080p, 60 frames per second. I could definitely see Nintendo doing that for the handheld. I mean, Steam Deck, you could get... 60 frames per second depending on what game and how you tweak your settings so i could see that happening all right uh that's i mean people are saying rumors leaks i'm just saying for nintendo this has to be something that they have to do because you know yeah your games are good and yeah you have good exclusives and things like that and yes we could play mario for the 10th time you know in a year but the technology has to be better because it doesn't make sense that we're getting these games that can't run correctly we can't get red dead redemption at 60 frames per second and this game is older than the switch you get what I'm saying? So, it's going to be hard for third parties to even jump on board when we don't even have the technology to support the games. i just seen a rumor or a leak or whatever about uh, ratings for Gotham Knights on the Switch. I'm going to be honest, that game didn't even run good on the Series X, okay? And that's n- noted as the most powerful console, okay? It didn't even run good on uh, Steam Deck. It didn't run good on certain PCs. So I can't even expect this game to work on the Switch. Mind you, this is the game where they said that they wasn't going to make an Xbox One and PS4 version of. So how are they going to get this to run on the Switch? I don't know. If they can pull it off, cool. You know, those impossible ports is what people like to call it. If they could do that, cool. I'm fine with all of that. But um, I just don't see... I don't see that happening. But back to the regular news. What I do see happening is Nintendo making that power jump. Now, they're claiming that the Switch 2 or next iteration of Nintendo's product, whatever it's called, it's going to have more RAM than a Series S. I don't want to say that's not possible. But I feel like in the landscape of gaming right now, that console will have to have 12 to 16 gigs of RAM, to be honest. Okay? To put it into perspective, I think, if I'm not wrong, I believe the iPhones have 8 gigs of RAM. Okay? And 
they're running Call of Duty Mobile. Okay. Most of these developers are making games with the Series X, the PS5, high-end PCs in mind. You need RAM <laughs> to get these games to run. If you skimp out on your RAM trying to save and cut corners and stuff, save money, it's not going to be well. We're going to Nintendo's only going to have the exclusives to roll off the back for. You're not going to get th- the Call of Duties. You're not going to get the I don't know, the Gotham Knights. You're not going to get the Starfields. I'm not saying Starfields are going to come there. Just an example of the scale of the games. You're not going to get these open world games and these RPGs and these graphically looking games and stuff. You know, I just feel like the RAM is important. And um, if Nintendo finds a way to get it to work, just know everyone's going to compromise when it comes to the money. It's going to be more expensive. And that's just from a leak from Nate the Hate. Okay. Going through it. Um, backwards compatibility is still up in the air. Uh, no information on that. And that right there scares me. Because the Switch library is pretty big. Because this console came out in 2016. So from 2016 all the way up until now. Uh, thousands of Switch games released. You have a whole bunch of games, collections, retro games. You have Switch games that got remastered. Now, Nintendo could do this a couple of ways. You could just be, you know, consumer friendly and just, you know, make it so that way our games work. (laughs) But then again, it's Nintendo. And I don't expect Nintendo to sit here and think about the consumer first. Because when have they ever thought about the consumer? But... I can see a world where we got two options. I heard a rumor. I don't like rumors. Take it with a grain of salt. That the games, they might charge you. (laughs) They might charge you a fee to play your games backwards compatible. I don't believe that because if you have an extensive game or switch a library, I don't believe that you should pay for something to get a better version of it. I mean, PS4. You know, Sony did it. I don't agree with that. I feel like they, if anything, they should take the route that Microsoft did with the free upgrades. You know? But then again, who am I to, you know, dictate that? It's whatever Nintendo wants to do. But people are still going to buy the console. And it, people are still going to buy the game just because there are fans of Nintendo and Switch and all this other crap. But if I buy a game on one console... If I'm only getting a couple frames extra, then, and, you know, a little graphic fidelity or whatever, I mean, I don't think it's worth that. And outside of that, that's all we know. There's no gimmick yet that we know about because every console, every system that Nintendo releases, they have a gimmick. So for the DS, it was touchscreen. 3DS, you had the 3D feature. Um... The Wii, it was motion controls. The Wii U had the tablet, the second screen. And the Switch is the hybrid dock in nature. You play the game in the house, take it with you, pick up where you left off. Now, I don't know. If you want to be honest, if it's motion controls, uh, I probably wouldn't gravitate towards it. Because I am not the type to sit there and get tired while playing my game. If I come home from a long day of work, that's the last thing I want to do is keep moving around. If they decide to stay with the Switch hybrid option, that would be the most ideal situation. But I honestly believe that the Switch is so popular right now, it's selling well, that you will want to keep the Switch name attached to it or keep it closely in the realm of the Nintendo Switch. Like how the DS, DSi... 3DS, it's in the same realm, you have different, you know, well, the games were compatible for the DSi and DS and stuff like that, DSXL, whatever, but for the 3DS, it's different games. I can see them doing it that route, but then what happens is you're going to leave a big consumer base (laughs) left behind, and I just feel like if that's the route they're going to go... Hey, but the ideal route would be 
discontinue the regular switch, make the OLED switch the standard model, which is three hundred should be three hundred or three fifty. And then you know what? If they come out with the new switch and this thing could do four K or ten eighty or whatever the case is and it's stable and I could get next gen games, Call of Duty maybe on the go, you know what? I'll pay four hundred for it. I'll pay four hundred for it. That way it's at a competitive price with the Series S and with the PS4. So that way it comes down to oh, do I wanna get a graphically looking game good game or do I want a game that looks good and I could take it outside with me? Cause this is where Nintendo could actually win. I don't even want to say win the generation, but you know, win over some people. If somebody has a choice to get a PS4 digital, a Series S, or new Switch Pro, whatever you want to call it, Call of Duty's on all of them, which one you rather get? The one you could take outside with you on the go? Or the one that you can only play in the house? Think about it as a parent buying it for their kid, not as a gamer like what most of us are. We're obviously going to pick stable frame rates, at home, monitors, all that good stuff. Okay. Like I said, guys, I am not a N Nintendo fan. I am not a Sony pony. I am not an Xbox. I'm not a PC master race, okay? I like all consoles. I play all of them. I'm just giving my opinion. If you guys like my opinion and my take on the Switch and the future of it and the future of Nintendo, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification button. If you disagree with me, that's totally fine. You can just, just drop your opinion down below. I try to get back to everyone. Um... You know, I really appreciate all the love from the last video, and it's a little motivational bump, so I'm trying to give my opinion while, you know, being open to other opinions, alright? If you like the video, you already know what to do. I'm out. Thank you.